This is the show for grown ups. And they say bad words. And they say bad words. Say final warning. Final warning. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Pod of Blunders. My name is Nate Magnuski. I am your host today. And with me is my lovely wife, Jenna. This is where you say hello. Sorry, right then my phone, my uh, speakers were changing over to my headphones and I didn't hear how nice you were talking about me. This is Jenna's last appearance in the Pod of Blunders. So <laughs> say goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> my lovely friend, Richard. Hi, everybody. And Ryan's here. He's all right. Hey, what's up? Hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of energy I love on the pod. Ryan, what are you playing today, dude? We're playing Mothership. Hell yeah. yeah. And specifically, we're playing an adventure called The Haunting of Ypsilon 14. Ooh, spoopy. So let's go around the quote-unquote table and introduce our characters. Talk about what they are, what they look like, what they specialize in, all that gorgeous stuff. Starting with Jenna, because she's to my top left. I'm also the tops. Go ahead, Richard. I know you want to say something. I saw your face. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your whore mouth shut, Richard. <laughs> All right. So I am Dr. Annabelle Murphy, and I am a tiny, relatively weak, like not super weak, but like below average little scientist who gets super excited about everything. What are you wearing, <laughs> Annabelle from State Farm? You can clear your trinkets, your patch, and your uniform. Like, get into it. Come on, paint me a word picture. So, I am wearing a vacuum suit, a vac suit, Ooh. with a pith helmet, which is appropriate because, you know, pith helmets are signs of colonialism, and we're going to a colony out of an asteroid. Mm -hmm. And my patch is a risk of electrocution patch. So it's got like a, a person getting zapped. Nice. Let's move on to Richard. What's going on with you? I'm Roy, the, one of the ship's androids. I'm the mm -hmm. thing that they send out before they send out the human beings, so I'm like a canary. <laughs> so I go down to the places before they actually send you know somebody of value so they don't get injured. For my trinkets, I always carry a can of spray paint. I imagine it's like bright neon orange, which is where we can mark for the explosives. And I have a patch on my lapel that says, I'm not a rocket scientist, but you're stupid. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> and last but not least, Ryan, tell me about your dude. Hell yeah. Lieutenant Jonathan Walsh, the Marine of this crew. Don't fuck around. You're here to kill aliens, and that's about it. Armed with my trusty SMG... And my standard battle dress. Got a heads up display, body cam, which is turned off at all times. Don't want no evidence. And some short range comms. Uh, with my equipment, I got a kookery because I like to get it all real up close and personal. And my patch says keep well lubricated. Don't want no weapon jams. You know what I mean? Yes, that's what that means. Yeah. You are all members, crew members of the ship, the Demeter. You are all. Hired by Lexington Logistics, you are on the LWCS Demeter, and you've been dispatched to a very small mining colony to resupply and to pick up the valuable minerals extracted from the colony. The ship goes out there like once every month or so to resupply and make sure everything's going well. And that's you lucky folks, and you are the away team for this mission. So you've got your little escape pod, you're blasted off to this horrible little asteroid, there's two docks on it. One of them is already occupied by a sleek-looking white ship. So you go to the other dock, where you link up. So you step off your ship. You see an airlock in front of you. So you hear a, a voice come over the intercom before you reach the, the airlock. It says, oh, uh, you guys must be the, uh, either the relief crew, or maybe you're the resupply crew? We're the resupply crew. Oh, great, great. Yeah, we weren't really expecting the relief crew, but, you know, wishful thinking. Are you guys armed? Yep. Why? It's just kind of strange. I, I, I don't 
you don't usually see armed people come out to the base, but it's, it's probably fine. It's, um, actually, I'm, I'm kind of glad you guys look more ready and, and able than some of the regular crews. Uh, did they tell you about, about Mark? What about Mark? I'm sorry. Let, let's get you inside first. No, uh, are... you're a little nervous there, fella. What, what, who's Mark? Uh, well, Mark is, uh, are you sure you don't want to just come in and talk? We can No, 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 we can, we can discuss Mark right now. Uh, Mark is, uh, he's an engineer, um, and he went missing two days ago. And well, this, this is a pretty small colony and there's only 10 of us on here. Well, yeah, there's 10. Sure. You know, we, we don't know where he went. So I thought maybe they, we told, we told the captain of your ship, but I guess he didn't tell you that you were to assist in searching and figuring out what happened to Mark. No, we've heard no such thing. Oh. So, it's an asteroid. How far could Mark go? Well, that's yeah, don't you guys keep logs of everything? Where people go in and out of doors, stuff like that? Yeah, everyone's chipped and everyone's logged when they enter or exit any of the rooms or airlocks. It's, that's the thing. I, I really don't like talking over the intercom. Can you just come in? Um, you can all right, come all in right. Anyway. The airlock whooshes open. You hit with a wall of hot air, like upsettingly hot. Your your sensors and your vac suits register it as being about 110 degrees. Oof. Yeah. Oof. I don't and feel you walk thing. in. <laughs> no. <laughs> and you're greeted by a very dirty looking woman. And uh, she kind of brushes her hair out of her face and reaches over and tries to shake your hand. Whoever's first. Who comes through the airlock first? Me first. I want to see all the stuff. Okay. So she shakes your hand and she says, hi, I'm, I'm Sonia. I'm, I'm the admin here in the colony. Hi, Sonia. So is there anything unusual about this asteroid? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, besides being really mineral rich and, and not really like any of the other asteroids in the area, they really didn't tell you anything before you came no. here? No. Uh -uh. We thought it was a solid metal asteroid. That's why we, we settled here. But it's not. It's going to sound strange. But there's pockets of liquid in the asteroid. Have you... I don't need tests on the liquid. What is it? Well, Dr. Giovanni did. Yeah, Dr. Giovanni was really excited about the, the we call it the goo, because that's, I mean, that's what it is. It's like a yellow goo. But Dr. Giovanni has uh, been kind of like weird about it. He just keeps mentioning discoveries and something, and he took a bunch of samples back to his ship. But I mean, where is he now? He's in a ship on the other airlock. I'm sure you saw the ship when you came in. Oh, uh, is that white one? The yeah. slick-looking white one? Yeah, the Heracles, it's called. But anyway, Does you must... he let guests on? He's kind of private. Dr. Giovanni was dispatched to the station. Look, every six months, we get a doctor come by, make sure we're all eating well, and make sure there's nothing wrong with the atmosphere, that kind of stuff. Um, usually, they stay for like a week or two, and then they leave. He's been here four weeks now. And when did um, Mark go missing? About two days ago. Has anybody seen Dr. Giovanni since then? No, uh, he went on a ship maybe a little bit before that. We saw Mark more recently. We've seen Dr. Giovanni. Let me put it that way. Well, I mean, we're just here really to drop some shit off, right? Mm, I mean, that's maybe what you were supposed to do originally, but Lexington wants you guys to help us figure out what happened in the colony. I mean, there's, again, like there's only 10 of us here, including the doctor and myself and, and whatever happened to Mark. Can you hail Dr. Giovanni? Why don't you come into the workstation and meet some of the other folks here? I really want to see that goo, though. <laughs> <laughs> so there's ten. There's ten people all together. Yes. And now with the you three humans, so there should be thirteen humanoids, not three including of, me because I'm correct. a robot. Yeah. How? What's the range of my bio scanner? A hundred meters in all directions. So you can reach some of this area, but not all of it because the mine is pretty deep in the asteroid. The asteroid is several miles in circumference. It's a big asteroid. Okay, then I won't use it yet. You can use it several times. It's not like it's like one and done. No, no, I know, but I wanted to see if I could scan the entire asteroid. Mm. I'll go to the. I station. mean, who is she, who is she to us? She's just. She's the an admin, admin on the station. Yeah, she's the, she's, she's like the person the mayor, in charge. Yep, right? she's the person uh, in charge of it all. We got our orders from ranking personnel. Right. Who does she rank in terms of them? On board the station, she's judge, jury, and executioner. Uh, so we have to kind of go by what she says. Yeah. <clears throat> All and, right. Uh, you can always call back to your captain on your ship and ask. Yeah, you, let's like, do that. Think this is a bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you I, hail the captain. 
Yep. Captain Vandross comes over the intercom and is like, uh, "What? What do you want? Are you done yet?" Is it Luther uh, Vandross? No. We're uh, we're He's being told. What's happening, baby? <laughs> hey, how you doing, sweet thing? <laughs> Sir, we're we're being told by some crazy, dirty lady here that um, that they're, they're pulling rank here that we need to assist them on finding some I don't know missing worker. You hear a sigh. Uh, you know, it can't take you more than a day. This this kind of shit happens sometimes. They go AWOL, they off themselves in some fucking vent or some shit. Like just just check it out and be get your back ass back here as soon as you can. All right, but yeah, he's right. right. Roger, sir. We'll make it happen. Click. All right, let's go let's see the admin. All right, so your work boots clang, your magna boots clang back into the station to the main workspace area. And it's hot as hell. You thought the other place was hot. This is even hotter somehow. And you can hear there's turbines blowing, trying to get some air circulation here, but it's really not doing much at all. This place is like, imagine a, air, like a, a hangar. It's about 150 meters long, 50 meters high. And it looks like this is just a processing center for all the mineral coming up. In one corner, you see there's a workspace computer terminal. In another corner, there's a very slapdash med bay. There's some doors coming off in different directions that are labeled handily. Oh, well, yeah, isn't that nice? Handy. Yeah, so to the northeast, there's a thing that says mess. To the east, there's crew quarters. And then in the very distant part of the area, you see uh, and it looks like a, a big hole in the floor with a massive elevator leading down into the darkness. And it's, in addition to being very hot here, it's also exceedingly loud. Down inside of the hole, it's really loud? Yeah, it's not too quiet up here either. Though. Okay. And you see there's a young man working, very excitedly kind of bopping to his own music on his cassette player. He's leaning over the ore, picking up big chunks that are of a strange orange hue and tossing them into a big bucket. And uh, he's got a few of these lined up. He really seems to be enjoying himself. And then you see a very tired looking guy, middle age, mumbling under his breath, uh, moving the buckets to a big hopper that are pushing it on a conveyor belt somewhere else into the station. Let's go ahead and herald that ship there, Sonia, so we can uh, make this refueling or resupply quick. Then we get back sure. to work. So she heads over to the, the terminal. She hits the button and she says, OK, uh, hi, uh, Dr. Giovanni, are you there? Dr. G Giovanni, this is Sonia. There's no response at all. Mm, of course, two missing people. And she goes, well, he, he definitely went to a ship. He, he didn't leave, I, I can tell you that. Everybody's chipped. Mm -hmm. Can you tell if Mark went anywhere near that? Wh where was Mark's last known location? Mark's last known location was in the mines. Okay, so he never came back up? Nowhere near that ship? Not per this, no. Hmm. And was the Dr. Giovanni chipped as well? Let me know his last yeah. known. Yep, he okay. has to be chipped to walk to, to walk around the station because everything's so dangerous and the stuff here is so valuable. Everyone has to be chipped for their own safety. How hard is it to remove the chip? I mean, it's bioscanned. As soon as you walked onto the ship of yourself, you've been scanned already. So it's sequenced to you. We say chip, but it's more of a signature of yourself. It's like a fingerprint. Okay, so it's not something you can remove. Correct. How long has it been since Mark was detected in the mine? Oh, that was two days ago. So we got there's been four... nothing on him since. Correct. So if somebody dies, I'm assuming, what what kind of uh, feedback do you get in the system that way? Is it just poof? You, do you do you have vitals on him or? Well, usually it tracks the vitals and it shows them, say, spiking if they're or say like their O2 is low, that kind of stuff. We're we're pretty invasive around here, to be honest, about the health of our people. It would have shown something going wrong with him. Gotcha. So it was perfectly normal, then he vanished. Yeah. Dr. Giovanni had checked us all a week or two ago, and everyone had a clean bill of health. I'd like to go aboard Dr. Giovanni's ship. Yeah, I was thinking since it's closer closer nearby, I, I think I agree with the, the android here that we should check the ship first. You can always go I knock. I get to see the goo. I've wanted to do this the whole time. I mean, you guys can go knock on the airlock, but he's got it coded. I can either hack in or lock pick it. Let's go. Yeah, or I'll blow the fucking door open. Let's go. Okay, great. So you guys head over to airlock one. So they're at the airlock. She opens the airlock up. You walk to the front of the ship, and you see that there is just a port closed with a little number pad next to it. Uh, 
you want to give it a, a hack there. Or do you also want to use your scanner now that we're close to the ship? See if you pick up any life forms. Yeah, because if I see two, the second one could be Mark. Yeah, save us a fucking trip down in the mines. So yeah, I'll use my bio scanner to see if there's only one person, two, or none. You scan, you pick up one life sign. Does it tell me anything more? Is it on the move? Is it it's standing elevated at all? Is it humanoid? You can just detect the life. You can't detect anything about the life with the scanner. Okay. Uh, it's just standing still. Do you, can you pinpoint where on the ship it is? Is it like near the door or? It's in a. It's in the back. Well, I guess we could try to hack in this. Yeah, I'll hack it. All right. So you want to give me an was it intellect roll? And if you have the, uh, you said that you have hacking right as an advance. Yeah. Did you say he was the dumbest one too? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So hack. So and the hacking gives you a plus fifteen percent to your intellect. So you plus fifteen. Under twenty-eight, right? You run a, well, plus fifteen for hacking. So we get to roll below a forty-three. Below a forty-three. Eighty-nine. I did not do that. <laughs> no, <laughs> you did not. It was a minor alarm. And it says intruder detected. Intruder detected. It's oh, double detected. super sake. encoded. It's beyond anything I have in my databases. Yep. And Very advanced. Even though the klaxon is going off, the life sign in the back of the ship does not move or seem to acknowledge what's happening. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Uh, how how sturdy does this door look? I mean, it's a spaceship door, so it's pretty sturdy. But well, I mean, a frag, frag grenade. Yeah, yeah. You have frag grenades. Richard has an anti ship weapon. So. I've also got a laser cutter. We could just cut the oh, door. I, oh yeah, do that if you get that. I won't. I don't. I won't waste a good old frag yeah. grenade if you're gonna. Yeah. And cut a, a big old hole in the door. <laughs> sure. So as you're cutting, as soon as you light it up, you hear, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> from from Sonya in the intercom. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'm very worried about it. You're cutting into a goddamn ship. What are you doing? Don't worry about it. Keep cutting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ready my gun. Just All right preparing for i mean it, we just tried to hack the ship and there's no response that seems fishy as fuck yeah so you hear mag boots behind you running up and it's sonya and a another person the, the young guy who looked like really happy and bopping around to the music uh -huh. behind you why are you cutting into giovanni's ship don't worry about it do you, we have my station I, I point the gun at her yes Oh whoa, 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 whoa. We, no, no. Okay. We have a whole lot of really unusual, dangerous circumstances going on. There is an unresponsive person inside that our android detected that did not respond at all to the intruder alarm. So Dr. Giovanni may be inside injured. We don't know. What we do know is we already have one person missing, and there's some really fishy stuff going on here. We need to get inside the ship. And I don't have time for your bullshit. We're going in. Lieutenant Walsh, unfortunately, as much as I would love to join you, I'm programmed to obey the commanding officer, so I have to side with... Is she commander? What's your... Just Sonya. Admin Sonya. I have to side with him and Sonia on this. And our captain said, get this shit done quick. And she says, you need to keep this guy on a leash. And she storms off. Keep cutting. All right. So it takes a few minutes, but you get through the door. You, I assume, lower it to the ground gently or loudly. I don't know. But the ship inside looks fairly spotless. It's bright on the inside like it was on the outside. Uh, well lit. And you don't really hear anything. I'm going to smell. I don't know why I feel like I need to smell, but I'm going to smell. You smell antiseptic. Okay. You smell like an unwashed body. As clean oh, as this place looks, very good. it smells it's like yeah. it smells like heavy BO. Like this, the sweet That's BO good. almost. It's not good. I guess we start making our way slowly to the um, where the life... Do we see any, as we're making our way there, any type of signs of struggle? Yeah. You know, duress? Yeah, weirdly enough, as you walk down the hall, you look into the what would be the washroom, and it's been completely destroyed. And you see gonna, in the middle of the room a crowbar sitting there. I'm going to turn on the body cam and just say, like, Sonia, you see this shit? She's like, what? Okay, that's weird. Before he disappeared, Mark destroyed one of the washrooms on the station. He said it was an accident, but, I, I mean, you don't, 
you don't snap the shower heads off the walls by accident. Not all of them. Anyway, Wait, just just the he, shower heads. Yeah, he destroyed the shower heads, and he, it, it, the water won't work. We had to, we, we jury rig something. That's what half this friggin' station is. But hmm. all right, but something is something's wrong. Is there anything else that I can? Is there like anything? Like biological material in terms of like, has anybody injured themselves in the process of ripping apart the bathroom? Is there? You do see some yellow goo, <gasps> like handprints on the walls and smeared. They look like no one's bothered to clean them up, but they're not as as like obvious. You know, it's not like big pools of it, but you can see there's yellow goo on like the edges where somebody might catch themselves if they were falling or if they were stumbling through. Okay, can I use my biology to examine it? At disadvantage because you have no equipment with you. I have a trained plus ten percent. So, is that intellect plus ten? Yeah. Oh, Richard, earlier you failed a roll, so take plus one stress. Oh, so when that number, when, when we get that number, bad shit starts to happen. I'm assuming. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so I did not roll successfully. I needed to roll under a fifty-eight, and I got a sixty-five. Okay, so you take one stress. You have no idea what this is. God damn it. Your only assumption is that it's it's biological. Even that is, again, it's a, it's a reach, given what you're looking at. How did you examine it? I'm going to say I just went over and I looked at it and with a glove touched it to see, like, if it's viscous or not. Yeah, it's about the, the consistency of, like, a somewhere between a putty and honey. You did that, and you get one more stress. That's cool. Uh-huh. Now what are you guys going to do? Going to keep pushing forward to the life form. Android, make sure you're armed and ready for whatever the fuck is on the other side. I have my That's hand all... welder. You don't have any types of fucking weapons? Uh, I mean, the laser cutter. The laser cutter like is like an anti ship weapon. Yeah, it's it? like a lightsaber on a pistol. It, is he ex excavation? So you do have technically a crowbar too, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're a real you're Gordon fucking... Freeman type walking around. <laughs> Alright, I'll take, I'm taking point then. Jesus. You turn a corner. Uh, where the yellow goo sort of, sort of leads you, you see Dr. Giovanni standing with his back to you. He looks like he's leaning over a uh, microscope. I call out. He stands upright. And he slowly turns around. He's smiling. That's unsettling. He's got a scalpel in his hand. You see that his throat's been slashed. And hanging out of his throat is like a bib. Oh, yeah. We're of firing. This, of this yellow nope. goo. No, nope. well, pull the first, trigger. First, give me a... <laughs> Give me a fear save, everybody. And everyone but the android has disadvantage on that fear save. Uh, uh, what, that's a D100 again? Yep. So we're going to roll it twice, right? Take the lower yeah, number? Exactly. Okay. that's uh, So my first one's a 19, and the second one's a 30. You're safe. Whew. And I want to roll under? Yeah. Oh, no. 26. I rolled one over. <laughs> I had to be hey. under an 85, and I rolled a 100. Are you serious? This, this android is shook. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, my God. Well, you, you all get one stress at least. Oh, I do too? Oh, you don't. I'm sorry. You're fine. All right. You're the one that <clears throat> kept it frosty. You did good. Yeah, well lubricated. No one did a critical fail. Let's see. Yeah. That's all. You just get some stress. You're fine. I'm um, overheating. At what point is stress going to start negatively affecting a person? There's certain things that make you do a panic check. And huh. when that happens, then, then stress comes into play. But until then, you're just kind of a little upset. Okay. okay. You're just a little destabilized. Something's, something's not quite right with you. Ryan, I'm sure you want to act first. Give me a speed check. Whoever wants to engage in combat, give me a speed check. Uh, no, I rolled uh, 67. Double zero and seven. Okay, that's just a seven. Apparently, I'm just over this. What did you do? Stuff. I got an 85. Okay, so Richard, you rolled a seven. Yep. So, Roy, take your uh, action if you want to do something against this bad Larry. I want to incapacitate him. So, as he comes toward me, I'd like to try to give him like the old Vulcan neck pinch and just put him out nonviolently. Okay, that'll be combat. My combat rolls a 32, and I rolled a 50. Well, I have to roll a save for him. Actually, I have to do a, a body save, I'm going to say, for him. He's not really armored. Oh, he rolled a 79. That's not good for him. So you took your action. You went to pinch him. 
he's too wily. He's too squirrely. It didn't really do anything to him. And he lumbers towards you, actually, since you're right there next to him. And he slashes at you with his scalpel. So give me a check. Give me a uh, armor check. Armor check. So my armor is a 32. And I rolled a 75. You take 1d10 damage from the scalpel. The scalpel goes right into your vac suit. And you are depressurized within a minute or so. So I take six damage. He goes to stab you. He doesn't really get too deep, but he slashes the length of your arm. Like right from your shoulder down to your, about your elbow. And I'm spraying white milky blood. Of course you are. All right, now we'll go to Lieutenant John. I'm going to shoot this motherfucker. So <laughs> to hit, it's a 1d100, I'm assuming. Yep. All right. Okay, 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 okay. Roll. And that's a 63. Nope, did not roll underneath my combat score. And he succeeded in his armor check anyway, so... Shit. You blast, he kind of falls. Yeah, you paint the back of the wall. There's little holes uh, in the facade, but it doesn't pierce the ship itself. So that's a plus. And now we're down to Dr. A. What's up, Doc? I got my vibe shetty, and I'm hack and slashing. Okay, go for it. No whammy, no whammy, no whammies. Stop. No. My combat is a 27, and I rolled an 83. Oh, well, he also failed. So you, you are both in melee range now, you and the android. You saw him stab the android. He looks kind of afraid now. You can see his eyes are wild. He's not making any sounds. He's kind of gurgling. As he's fighting you, you're seeing bits of his arm fall off. Like mm. He's swinging. And it's, it's just kind of hitting the floor like, a, I don't know, like if you drop a taco and it kind of splats open like that. And you can see his meat's been replaced with this yellow goo. Uh-uh. So that's going to be a sanity check for you, Doc. Okay. And uh, just as a reminder, if I fail this, everybody gains a stress. And I'm trying to roll below a 40. Dear God. 35! Hey, there you go. I'm, I'm okay sure. with this. It's some I'm kind sure. of biological compound. This is okay. Right, you've experienced aliens before. Maybe this isn't that shocking to you. It's definitely the robot's turn now. So, Android, go ahead. Uh, and I'm in melee distance? Yes, you and your crowbar. Or whatever you have. I feel like I'm a, a robot. I don't really need weapons. I can just yeah. punch with my metal arm. I don't remember like Bishop being really strong, though. Was he really strong? Ash was, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you're a pleasure bot, so I don't think you'd be very strong. True. Again, I'm just going to try to karate chop him in the neck to try to bring him down without killing him. Okay. So combat to 32 and a 57. <laughs> Maybe he'll roll really terrible. Let's see. He critically failed, so that means actually it's a success for you. He rolled a 66. Yeah. His defense was like a 35. So you karate chop him in the neck. Your hand sinks into his body, up to his sternum. He splits sort of in half, kind of. It sprays yellow goo, so... After these messages, we'll be right back. Coming to the World Wide Web, it's the Internet's premier podcast that gives you the 411 on the 1990s favorite television teams with Tood. The Ninja Turtles? As if... The Power Rangers? Talk to the hand! My bad. You must mean the space shots. No duh. They're all that in a bag of chips. That's P-H-A-T fat. How do I scope that? Just head on over to our Patreon, and starting at a dollar, you'll get two gnarly episodes of Jumping the Street Sharks a month, plus a bunch of other tubular shiznit. Actually, that sounds lame. I think I'll keep my cheddar to myself. Not! So if you want to support us, head to the Patreon link in the show notes. We appreciate you, and can't wait to share more Jawsome content with you soon. Hey there, Dr. Murphy. You're covered yeah. in goo, and so is old Roy here. Does it do anything when it touches my back suit? It goos, that's it. it okay, really, I wasn't sure if it like or like... No, no. Effervesces, I don't know. No, it doesn't seem like it's sentient or anything like that. It just seems like a good goo. So it's all over your vac suit. This guy is dead. I know you weren't trying to kill him. I'm sorry, but he's very dead. Oh, so I was I'm, definitely trying to kill him. Yeah. So I'm covered in his guts, basically. You're covered in whatever his guts used to be are now yellow goo. Okay. 
this is fine. And the thing is still twitching, and you see like the teeth are still like grinding. It's oh, I'm putting a couple of shots on that if it's still moving. Can a robot kill a person? I mean, I don't know if you're governed by Asimov's laws of robotics, and you weren't trying to kill him. That's what I'm saying, but th- there's a... Uh, he was paradox. technically, like, already dead, and he was an alien. Does it? I, are, you're not supposed to kill human life, so technically, I don't think he's a human. Well, I don't think I don't he can be programmed point. just to not kill human life, though, because he's got to go... Ex- he's the canary in the coal mine. He's got to go out, and he might encounter all kinds of alien life. But again, he wasn't trying to kill. Right. So it doesn't he, matter. It happened, which that can mess with a. If you think that would mess with you, then absolutely roll a sanity check. Yeah, I think that would mess with me. Okay. Don't make me put you down. Question. Sanity. Yeah. Was Lieutenant's body cam still on? Oh, fuck no. I turned that off after we saw the bathroom. Okay, because I was just thinking it might have been good if Sonia had seen that. No, no. Oh, he, he's a dirty, <laughs> dirty cop. Dirty yeah. I, I wouldn't say I'm a dirty space cop. I just get the fucking job done, okay? All right, so I have it to roll against a 20. And I got a 68, so. You can't distress. I'm bothered by taking a human life. Yeah. So a question for you guys. One of the reasons you would roll panic is if you encounter a horrific creature for the first time. Would you think that counts? I think... I mean, I encountered it for the first time, and now I'm covered with its guts. So I feel like uh, that that what, would was, produce some feelings. Was it her? Well, all right. So at least in my perspective, being a marine, I'm assuming I've seen other alien life before. Yeah. Is this that crazily different? Are we talking like regular <laughs> area, aliens compared to what we just saw, Dead Space style here? Or I'm gonna let you decide. You know your character better than I know your character. If you feel this is something that would mess you up. Then I'll have you roll for panic. I don't think so, not yet. Okay, that's totally I feel fine. Like, I feel like normally the stuff probably would not, but the fact that I'm, I, it's been exploded onto me, I would. Well, yeah, also, there was a man with a slit throat still running around hacking at you. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to say yes for me. Okay, and how about you, Android? I think he's panicking for other reasons, right? Yeah, that, <laughs> right? That, that doesn't bother me. It's the fact that I've taken a human life. All right, well, let's have you roll panic as well. For panic check, Jen, you want to roll 2d10. You want to roll above your current stress level. I rolled over my current stress level. So you heal one stress. You might be covered in goo, but you're oddly fine with it. Well, because at least it's dead now. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Can we tell that the android's having some type of inner existential crisis right now? Yeah, well, why don't you roll 2d10 for me there, android? A six... And a five, so eleven, and my current stress is a five, so I'm above. So you're totally fine. So heal one of those stress. You're down to four stress now. You did not panic. Good job, not panicking. Proud of you guys. Yes, you you grasped that this was important, although regrettable. <laughs> so but also not human. The klaxon has gone off. Gunfire has been reported. You hear footsteps again behind you, and you see Sonya and poor little Ashraf again. They looked freaked out, and they're like. Oh my god, what is that? And she throws up. She's just booting everywhere. Ashraf was like, oh my god. So I think we know what happened to Mark. Okay, I'm gonna try to comfort Sonya, but I'm not sure that's gonna go so great because I'm covering that. She's get away from me. Get away from me. Relax. Has anybody else started acting weird? Like breaking shower heads? I mean, there was one guy who was confined to his bunk. That's really the only person, uh, but he said he was sick. I don't I don't think there's anything wrong. We need okay. to go to his bunk immediately. All right, so before you go, let me describe the ship to you. There's samples of the goo under the microscope. This is a pretty advanced lab for a spaceship lab. And there's a cassette on the table near a cassette player. Handily. Okay, and I'm going to look in the see. microscope. So you see some of the yellow goo. Is it doing anything interesting? It's moving. It is moving on a, on a microscopic level. Microscopic? Yeah. It's fine. Mm. I'll play the, the cassette and the uh, the cassette okay. player. It says, it says uh, label printed on Dr. E. Giovanni, log HRCLS EXO 119. Initial reports confirmed. Subject appears to be biochemical in nature. Place of origin suggests medical use, though that's not much of a theory. Disappearance of worker 7709 likely unrelated. Possible negative reaction to water? 
not yet clear. I'll follow up on this in the morning. Initial positive results of the substance medical properties, whether it's possible to control its effects on our biology, what's essentially alien biology, currently inconclusive. It's incredible, truly incredible, a rate of healing beyond anything. It's almost as if it's replacing cells entirely, rewriting the body at the molecular level based on some, like a cocoon, how the creature's broken down and then remade. If, if anyone finds this, please uh, don't touch it. Do not come in contact with the... Get it off. Yeah, I look at Dr. <laughs> Annabelle Murphy. Get it off, Murphy. get it off, get it off, get it off. <laughs> yeah, um, you've got a suit on, don't you? I'd like you to give me fear saves again, because that was messed up. <laughs> and again, uh, the two humans are at disadvantage, because robot. <laughs> 35, I'm safe. 19, I'm safe. I'm not safe. All right, Jenna, you gain one stress. So, you killed a doctor. Congratulations. <laughs> Is there any bottles of water around? Or any water? I think our doctor may have some water with the MREs, maybe. I just want to splash it on the body. Is there, yeah, like, an eye wash station? Of course there's an eye wash station, and you notice it's been destroyed. Ugh. I was going to say, how about you wait and, and let us throw this water on this body first and see what happens yeah. before you put it on yourself. So you grab the water, you splash the body, and uh, nothing happens. It looks like the, the goo might have diluted a bit, um, but it's not like there's any like violent thing, like weird hissing reaction, like when the guy pokes the hot pin into the blood and it freaks out. It's mm. not a mm. I guess clean yourself off, doctor. That didn't sound promising. I was the only one who escaped getting splashed, correct? Because I was, you know, for her, yeah, for her to yeah. away. So you hear a whoosh behind you, like an airlock being closed whoosh. All right. I turn quickly with my gun aimed at the, at the, ah, as you heard. So you hear the voice come over and it's Sonya. She goes, look, you've, you've been exposed to that stuff. We can't let you back in the station. Uh, bullshit. You open this door right now. Listen. Look, Mark's gone, and now Morgan's missing too. I don't know what's happening, and I just saw that shit in there. I, I, I can't let you back into the ship. I'm sorry, if, the station. I'm sorry. If Morgan is missing too, then he's also he's got it there. It's in your station already. She's like, I don't care. Look, this one person that might be exposed in here, he might just be taking a shit for all I know. Uh, you or he might be in the mine somewhere. Like you guys, I know have been exposed. I've gotten through one door. I will get through the next. And if I get to you, I will kill you myself. Open the door. You hear a deep breath and Ashraf in the background going, just let him in. He's serious. She's fine, but you stay away from people. Don't get close That's to That's fine. We want to go see the guy who's sick in his bunk. And shoo, the door's open. If you're that concerned, just lock yourself away. That's fine. We got shit to do and Dr. Annabelle here needs to at least analyze what the fuck this shit is. Annabelle, you can use the lab. If yeah, you want here on, on the ship. I'm gonna do that. So it's Once another... I, like, am not covered in, you know, guts. You can do that here with the water that's available. Um, I was gonna say, that would be ideal. <laughs> just take some of his, the doctor's old clothes or whatever and rub all the shit off of you. Yeah. And again, you're in a vac suit, so... Uh, how about you know the you android? Can... He's covered in that shit. I know it shouldn't affect him because he's a robot, but, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it hasn't touched my skin. It's touched my suit. Right, but you need right. to get out of that suit. I can clean the suit off with the doctor's clothes. Is, is this stuff causing any type of fumes? I mean, yeah, it's a liquid, but who knows if it's giving off any type of gases and we're breathing shit in right now. That's a good idea. Your suit, if you have it on internal oxygen only, lasts for about an hour. Yeah, we're going to, uh, at least on my end, turning that shit on until we can figure out because now we also have a walking android who's just covered in it. It might be more than that, actually. It might be like six hours. Let me just double check real quick. Uh, mine says 12 hours of oxygen at rest or six hours of vigorous yes, um, yes. activity. Thank you. You guys are all set, then. You have half a day. And I don't have to breathe. Right. Yep, so. 
we'll do that until we can figure out if this stuff is some type of poison. Roy, you don't you don't notice anything different. You have the goo on you at this point, like in your suit because of the stab. You've noticed no difference. It looks like the goo is not really affecting your synthetics at all. Yeah. Roy, if you scan right now, does it register as a life form to you? I mean, he's dead. It shouldn't, but I can try it. No, I mean, just like the goo on mm. us. Is it? Is it a living thing in itself? Well, let me hit my little scan button here and let's see. That's a good point. Um, <laughs> while he's doing that, can I just call into the captain and tell him, just recap the shit that's going down? Sure. Yeah, captain here. Hey, we have some type of um, alien breach. Found one of the doctors here. Throat slit. Some weird shit coming out of his neck. Attacked our android and the doctor. We put it down, but it looks like this this mining facility is plagued with it already. Whatever this shit is. Oh, oh shit. Um, look, man, uh, I'll call back to headquarters, see what they want us to do, but in the meantime, you're you're stuck there. I'm not letting you back in the goddamn ship if you're fucking sick with something. Yeah, we'll get back to you. The doctor's going to do her tests. Let me know if I got to burn this fucker down too, if it comes to that. Yeah, just uh, maybe figure out where the fuel tanks are, if you know what I mean, just in case. We got to mm-hmm. copy this place. All right, carry on, soldier. Roger that. Can we hear him having this conversation? Did you put it on public comms or did you put it on? <laughs> Fuck no, public comms. Come on now. <laughs> nope. All you saw was him can look off at the middle distance. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do biology things. <laughs> All right. So roll biology. Unfortunately, you have a disadvantage. Actually, you know what? You have straight because it would have given you advantage for the xenobiology because it's an alien. So you have regular roll. Well, what about the results of my bioscan? Oh, yeah. He was bioscanning oh. still. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just, yeah. There are two life signs in here. The so doctor just and the lieutenant. And the lieutenant. Okay, so I need to roll below a 58. Let's see. 98. Close. (laughs) (laughs) You take a stress. This goo, it it eludes you again, even with all this equipment here. And you imagine this is the best equipment you're going to find on the ship, or on the station. You you don't have any clue what the fuck this is. It's a goo from Dr. Giovanni's recollection. It changes things that it comes in contact with. Um, It seems to make them stronger before killing them. Do we have anything that we can use to contain what the goo is on in this space that would, like, it, it wouldn't be able to um, escape? It's not moving. Like it's, it's, it's not ambulatory. No, I know, but I want it sealed so that it can't, like, get out. I mean, there's yeah, the airlock. The airlock, yeah. Yeah. That stops it from getting into the ship itself, or the station itself. The airlock would yes. take it out. But we can't put it in something in this space while we're working in it. I mean, it might be like small specimen containers, but he wasn't right. equipped to like bring back Home mass amounts of shit. Full, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like an old tote full of dead body. Can we put his body out the airlock like into space? Yeah, I'm sure there's like a garbage chute type thing. You could probably space it. I mean, I'm do we really want to let that shit out? If I learned anything from Battlestar Galactica, it's that you put that shit out the airlock. <laughs> I mean, a nice cleansing fire could do the trick, too. I don't know what it survives on, but it might also succumb to the vacuum of space like we would. Okay. All right. Hey, you're the doctor. So I want to put it out the airlock and, like, observe what happens to it when it goes out there. So you you gather the big pieces anyway, because there's a lot of, like, effluvia about. You put it in the airlock, you hit the button, and shoop, it goes out, you see it crystallize and float. Randomly away towards Earth. <gasps> Twist. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and that's all for this week's episode. But don't worry, the conclusion is coming out next Monday. Oh, and I need to give a huge thank you to Zach Walsh of Scheduled for Launch for bringing Dr. Giovanni to life with his amazing voice acting. On Scheduled for Launch, Zach interviews folks from the indie gaming scene to learn about their projects as well as the people behind them. Tune in every other Tuesday because, well, you've heard his voice. It's like butter and gravel. Gravelly butter. Great for a podcast, terrible for toast. If you want to support the Pot of Blunders, please consider heading to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash potofblunders, all one word. We've got membership levels ranging from $1 to $10 a month, 
which will get you access to things like our Discord, exclusive episodes of Jumping the Street Sharks, as well as a variety of other perks. You can also support the show and help us bring more attention to amazing indie authors by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. We really appreciate any help you can give. We love hearing from you. You can always find us on Twitter at Pot of Blunders, and you can also reach us via email at potofblunders at gmail.com. Want more reviews, interviews, actual plays? Head to potofblunders.com and learn about even more amazing indie games. Thanks for listening. For the Pot of Blunders, I'm Nate Magnuski, and as always, may all your Ds be 12s. <laughs> Why are you still here? There's no blooper this week. Sorry. We were real we were real pros. And uh we just knocked it out of the park. So no mistakes. Everything was perfect. Unless of course you count all the rules I got wrong. So don't do that. Bye.